Hello and welcome everyone to Manta's Let's Play of Civilization 5, this time as Persia. And I know I've been away for a while. Just got back um, yesterday from a from an event in Boston. Um, feeling starting up a new Let's Play. I'm sorry about what happened with Xantium. I played through that scenario a bunch of times, it just didn't work out. Um, so I just kind of had to abandon that game. I'm sorry. We're back here with the Persians, which are a lot of fun. One of my favorite civilizations in the game. Um, before we get started, let me talk about the mods I'm using. So first off, we got Bold and Brash. Uh, if you don't know what Bold and Brash is, it's a uh, it's a very very good painting by Squidward Tennis Balls. So um, definitely um, just added that it is a great artist piece. Uh, then there's this other mod I found um, that basically gives the windmill like an extra food from wheat. I think that's what it does, and that's definitely good. I feel like that balances out the um, the in-game building, but at the same time also provides a historical function because windmills are used to, well, grind wheat. Um, I have a mod for less warmonger hate because honestly I just think the warmonger um, hatred in the standard game is just ridiculous. Uh, it's one of my least favorite features of the entire Civilization V game. Um, I've got a mod for more great works, which is, again, not gameplay related, it's more aesthetic. I've got, um, Kramer and the Art of Seduction, which are, um, Seinfeld related great pieces of art, some more great musicians, uh, some really wacky religions, and a different map script. So again, nothing besides maybe, like, the Windmill and the Lost Warmonger Hate that are going to be changing the key gameplay whatsoever. Um, so, this episode is zero. Let's be talking about what we're going to be doing as Persia. Well, Persia's got um, Persia's got this unique uh, ability with them, which is probably one of my favorites. As Darius, so we got the Akanid Legacy, which gives us twice the length Golden Ages, and during our Golden Ages, we get extra movement and combat strength. Now, the extra movement and combat strength is sort of hard to levy. Um, not gonna lie, it's hard to be able to get into a good war where that combat strength is gonna make a difference and time that up right with your golden age. But what it does mean is the double age golden age or double length golden age, or I guess not double but fifty percent length golden age, means that essentially that's more production, more culture, and more gold. Uh, and a lot more. And one thing is gonna synthesize really well with that, that I am basically doing this entire game just to do is on the tech tree later on we're gonna want to be heading towards um civil service like asap because there's chichinitsa and i know it's 300 hammers it's a lot um but look what it's gonna give us it's gonna give us four happiness which is gonna give us golden inches quicker and it's going to double the length of our golden inches again so we're talking like super golden ages here um and even if we don't want that there are two other wonders later on later on down the line that i'm really interested in one being notre dame which is a bunch of happiness, which is good for golden ages. Um, and then finally, later on down here, we're looking at like the Taj Mahal, which should be an architecture, I believe. Yeah, there we go, our architecture, which gives us a free golden age um, and extra happiness. So we're talking like 20 turns, uh, some of maybe even upward of that, once we get there. So that's my plan. Um, Chishinisa, obviously, the most important one. Um, so that's what we're going to be going for. Might, like, piggyback off the Great Library to get there. Then also, what else does Persia have? Well, Persia also has um, two other nice improvements. First off, the Immortal, which is a uh, above-average unique unit, if you ask me, because it does exactly what the Spearman is supposed to do, but better. Um, if you've used Spears and Pikes before, you know that the way you're supposed to use them is basically put them near the city and use them to weather attacks. Use them as basically cannon fodder, right? Uh, and Immortals do this particularly well because they're 12 strength instead of 11 and then also they heal twice as fast so they can take a lot of abuse um and then also if we look at the set report which is the um the persian and unique building it's the market replacement and it's going to give us just extra happiness which is always nice because well faster golden ages all right so we've got our start here it's pretty balanced We've got a lake and a river, which means hydro plant later on, windmill, f or I'm sorry, watermill for sure, um, copper, which is always nice. Um, this will be a very strong tile. It's already two gold to uh, to food, and with the extra production from mine, it'll be even stronger. 
we're looking at really high production capital here and high food too. We consider all these river tiles we've got here. Stone, excellent. The town's a little bit out of the reach of the city if we found a new place. I think it's what we're going to do. Um, that's nice to keep in mind. So, let's talk what are we going to be doing in terms of policies. And I don't have everything mapped out just yet. But tradition and liberty are going to be high priority. I think liberty is going to be a little bit more important because we've got representation here. And one of the things that representation is going to give us is uh, is essentially a free golden age, which is excellent. Um, if we're talking about golden ages anymore, what we're also going to see is that in aesthetics, we have flourishing of the arts, which increases the culture in all of our cities that have a world wonder, and it gives us an immediate golden age. So that's definitely what I'd be looking for. Um, out of curiosity, a little religion. We see some of the, um, nah, alright. So, with that in mind, I will, well, you know, I'll scout out a little bit first. Um, I want to make sure there's something that would mean that I shouldn't move here, because if I move here, I will get all of these resources and the cows. I won't be adjacent to the lake, but that's not really a big deal. Um, let's take a look. Alright, so I'm not seeing anything that really tells me that I have to move over here yet. There could be a separate city over here that's going to take care of the cotton and the cows, and it'll be a high... It'll be a high production, not high production necessarily, but maybe high uh, food and gold city. This is, as I say, this is going to be a high food and production city, which is excellent, which is what you need for your capital, especially uh, if you're wanting to try to rush out Chichen Itza because the AI will just grab that up. Um, I don't know what we're going to be talking about for victory, maybe culture. Uh, that would be a lot of fun to try out. But, you know, Purse is pretty multifaceted. We'll keep it open. And you might have noticed we're not playing as Darius this time around. Um, well, we are, but not in name C. We're playing as Muhammad Mosadegh. Um, I, sorry if you're, if you're Iranian and if I butchered that, but, um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mr. Mozadega, and, um, I thought, you know what, I gotta play Persia, I'll play him. So, with that in mind, um, let's found in place. Well, actually, okay, let me, let me analyze this. I could get even more production if I moved over here, because this could turn into a, uh, lumber mill tile. But... That's, that's sort of... This is going to be a high production city anyway. I don't have to worry about that. Let's just found here. Ooh, and we got gold. That's excellent. Um, yeah, I am A-OK -okay with Persepolis or Tetran or, you know... Oh, God, I probably butchered that. All right, so we are going to choose our first tech, I think. Um, in order to get civil service, right, we'd have to get currency, drama, and poetry. Okay, so... That doesn't really require mining, but as you can see here, mining is going to be a big deal for the start. So, pottery and um, pottery is going to be like a, a priority because we want to get that library if we possibly can. Because if we can get the library, we can potentially jump up, jump it, excuse me, jump up into drum and poetry. It's going to save us a lot of time, um, which is just a quicker shoe into civil service. Um, Animal husbandry and archery, eh. I mean, not really priorities of mine. I think we'll do pottery first. It's usually the um, the go-to start. And then in Persepolis, uh, you know, I could I could be like a worker or something, but I'm not going to have mining for a while, so I think I'll hold off on that. Um, right now, as it stands, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I am using the Tectonics map script, which is uh, a little bit weird. But, basically, I mean, you'll see what it does later. Um, and I think I'm going to use a scout just so I can sort of explore the landscape. A monument would be, would be really, <laughs> would be really nice. Um, but more ruins can, can sometimes counteract that. If you get, like, a culture bonus from a ruin you wouldn't have gotten if you hadn't built a scout. It can sometimes outweigh that, that other build order. And I have ruins turned on. I always do. So, there we go. So that's going to be episode one of this Let's Play. Um, I'll see you guys later, and goodbye.